Hello everyone and welcome to the video. So you hopefully should have just watched the first video about the central dogma of biology. And the, the topic we're talking, talking about in this video is the first main part of the process of the central dogma, which is what we're going to call DNA transcription. So in DNA transcription, again, it's the first part of our central dogma, and we're basically starting with DNA, and we're hopefully going to end with a molecule of RNA. We also mentioned in the last video, when we think about the definition of the word transcription or to transcribe something, that means to copy something. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to be copying something. And there's important reason why DNA transcription is, is works the way that it does. So DNA, we hopefully remember, we hold it inside of the nucleus of our cells. And the information that is held within our DNA is really important because it tells our body how to make proteins, how to make these important molecules. But proteins are going to be made in the cytoplasm by ribosomes. So that's something we talked about in our cell parts unit. We find our ribosomes in the cytoplasm of our cells. But again, DNA is kind of held within our nucleus. So our DNA is really valuable, and we don't want to risk it getting damaged by sending it into the cytoplasm to make proteins. So as eukaryotic cells, we like to keep our DNA protected in our cell nucleus to make sure that we can keep it safe so that it doesn't get hurt by something that could be in the cytoplasm. So the way that kind of evolution worked around this is by creating an intermediate molecule, kind of making a copy of the information in our DNA, and that copy is going to be made up of RNA. So we're going to use a copy of our DNA um, by making a molecule of RNA. So the overall goal of DNA transcription is to create a copy of DNA using RNA, which will later be used to make proteins. So that is an overall description of the goal of DNA transcription. When we think about RNA, this RNA copy is going to be what we call complementary or opposite to the code on the DNA. And when we say this, I think a, a good way to think about this is that when we are creating this RNA molecule, it is going to be following Shargoff's rule. So if we take a look at our picture over here, what we can hopefully see, we have our original template DNA over here. And that DNA is going to serve as basically the the template of how we're going to create our RNA. So if we find that there is a T in our DNA, we're going to put an A into our RNA sequence. This works very similarly to DNA replication. So there's a lot of overlap between DNA replication and DNA transcription. So whenever there's a T, we put an A. Whenever there's an A, we may think you put a T, but remember, RNA is a little bit different from DNA. Instead of having thymine, T, we actually have U, uracil. So that's going to be an important difference to keep in mind. So whenever we have an A in our DNA, we put a U. Whenever there's a C, we put a G. Whenever there's a G, we put a C. So that is what we mean when we say that the RNA copy is going to be complementary. I also do have a, a little animation here to show us exactly how this might be happening in our cells. So in blue here, we have our double-stranded DNA molecule. It's first going to get unzipped, and then we're going to be copying it by creating this complementary RNA sequence. So we should hopefully see that by the end here, we have this single-stranded red RNA going to be created that is going to be our product of DNA transcription. So if you look closely as it's going through, it's going to be reading the molecule and matching it up with the proper base pair. So we, we're seeing that we're following Shargoff's rule here. Um, but again, we do have these U's getting put in whenever there is an A in our DNA because RNA has uracil instead of thymine. So I think this is a, a good animation to try to give us a start for an idea of what's happening here in this process of DNA transcription. All right, so we're going to break up DNA transcription into three main steps. So our first main step, we're going to talk about the really important enzyme related with this process of DNA transcription. And the enzyme that basically carries out this whole process by itself is going to be RNA polymerase. And if you remember from our discussion about DNA replication, the name of this enzyme sounds very similar to the main enzyme from DNA replication. In DNA replication, we had DNA polymerase. But in DNA transcription, we use RNA polymerase. 
And hopefully that makes sense to us because RNA polymerase is creating RNA while DNA polymerase creates DNA. So RNA polymerase is going to come in. It's going to actually open the DNA strand by itself. It's going to basically be able to unzip it on its own. And then it binds to one strand. And we're going to call that strand the template strand. That's going to be the strand that RNA polymerase is going to be reading or copying. Our second step of DNA transcription is that RNA polymerase then starts adding RNA bases that are complementary to the DNA to make a strand of mRNA. In our last video, we talked about the three main types of RNA, and mRNA, remember, is messenger RNA. So this mRNA is going to be this created red molecule here. And remember, on this last slide, when we say this word complementary here, this means that we're going to be following Shargoff's rule, but we're going to be using U instead of T to match with our A's. So whenever we're creating this complementary structure here, whenever there's an A in our DNA, our template strand, D RNA polymerase is going to be putting in a U, a uracil, instead of a T. Because remember that RNA does not have thymine. It instead has this U for uracil. So that's going to be our second main step. Once this copy gets made, the last main step is basically sending this mRNA into the cytoplasm to be read by a ribosome. And that's actually kind of leading into the, the other main process related with um, the central dogma of biology, which is DNA translation. But we're going to talk about that in a separate video. So again, this last main step, once we create our molecule of mRNA, we basically send it out into the cytoplasm to complete the next step. All right, so what we are going to do now is going to be very similar to what we did for DNA replication. Um, but instead of playing the role of DNA polymerase, you are now going to try on the shoes of RNA polymerase. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is to write out the following nucleotide sequence. So go ahead and just write out these, these letters and... Again, try to space them into groups of three. This is, again, going to be really important once we get to DNA translation. But go ahead and write these out in your notebook. Go ahead and pause the video while you're writing it. Great. So hopefully you've written out this full DNA sequence. And what I want you to do is below that DNA sequence, write out the resulting RNA sequence. But you need to remember that when we're dealing with RNA, the T's are replaced with U's in the mRNA sequence. So again, I, I just completely copied this here, so it's the same sequence. So again, right below here, what I want you to do is basically practice being RNA polymerase. And if you were RNA polymerase and you say, okay, if there is an A in my DNA, what am I going to put into my RNA to make it complementary, to make it match up? And then go to the next one. If there's a T, what do you put in? If there's an A, what do you put in? C, C, G. Go ahead and do that for the entire sequence here. And go ahead and pause the video while you do that, and we'll review it in just a second. So hopefully you didn't have too much trouble. I know it was a little bit tricky. Hopefully we were really conscious of making sure that our RNA sequence should not have any T's in there. There should be no T's in our new RNA sequence. Whenever we should have had a T in DNA, there would actually be a U um, for this RNA sequence. So let's take a look at what we should have gotten for our RNA. So again, whenever we have an A in our DNA, it's going to match up with a U in our RNA. Because again, in RNA, we do not have thymine. We instead have uracil, this U. So A matches with U. If we have a T, we match it with an A. If we have a C, we get, match it with a G. If we have a G, we match it with a C. So our full RNA sequence should read U, A, U, G, G, C, U, G, A, C, C, A, U, G, C, U, G, A. So hopefully that didn't give you too much trouble, but again, some good practice um, to, to take on the role of RNA polymerase. All right. Thank you all for watching.